After watching this video, you will know how to work with the DWG files and import them to Blender. You will learn different ways of converting the files and how I personally handle them when working with my clients. DWG files are an important part of the design and architectural work. You will often receive them as a project reference from which you'll need to create the rendering. They seem intimidating to many, but you'll soon learn there is nothing scary about the DWG files and you can handle them easily without any extra Blender add-ons. This video is part of my interior visualization course in Blender, which is available for free on my channel. You can find a complete playlist with all the videos linked in the video description below. If you want to access all of the project files and support what I do, I share more information on that at the end of the video. Anyway, my name is Lech and welcome to my interior visualization course in Blender. In this video, I'm going to talk about working with CAD data and the approach we're going to take will be the worst case scenario, which means receiving the DWG files only from your client or a designer and trying to build up a workable files we can import to Blender in order to create a 3D model. The biggest issue we're going to have is trying to solve this problem on multiple operational systems and that's because as mentioned in previous video DWG file format is a closed format from Autodesk and most of the Autodesk software was created for Windows only. The easiest solution that will work for everyone is simply going to viewer.autodesk.com website, creating an account and logging into it. And I'm please forgive me for the Polish language I have set up, but no matter how hard I tried, I wasn't able to switch it to English, but the interface should look the same basically for everyone. So. What you can do here is simply dragging and dropping a DWG file, which will be then converted and you will be able to view it. As soon as the file is loaded, this is the view you should have visible. So disable any errors you see. And yeah, you, as you can see, we can pan around the layout and zoom into the drawings we want to view we are interested in uh, the more we zoom the more detail we can see and yeah unfortunately the only practical way in my opinion to get anything out of the file is just using this print screen option here and the way it basically works it requires us to zoom into the image so practically the bigger monitor you have the better resolution you have the the more detail you're gonna get from the from the image from from yeah from using this tool uh it's obviously not the most elegant way to do this but well it works at least it works and believe me i was really trying to find a better way uh for getting the dwg drawings out of let's say under the Mac without obviously installing the AutoCAD or any other software. Um, yeah, so this is the way that it, it, it's bulletproof basically. So it works, it's not elegant, but you can definitely uh, get what you want, what you need from the DWG file using this method. So yeah, we just click this icon here. Uh, this is what displays on the right we click download and the, the image is saved to our drive the other way we can work with dwg files is using the autodesk's uh, dwg trueview application unfortunately is it is for windows only but it allows us to save the layout to the pdf file meaning we are able to precisely select what we want to have in our drawing, which is which can be later converted from PDF to JPEG and then finally imported to Blender. Working with raw DWG files is a worst case scenario in my opinion, and I think we have that covered pretty nicely. Uh, the better case scenario, and I think the most popular scenario you're going to face when working on the actual projects is simply 
receiving a PDF files with all of the technical drawings your client would like you to have. So in order to import those into Blender, we need to convert them into the JPEGs. If you're a Windows user using Photoshop, the process is pretty simple. You just drag and drop the PDF file into the Photoshop and change the resolution. By default, it's 300, but I'm decreasing it usually to 150 or 200. And then just click OK. What you should see are the drawing lines with the transparent background. And the first step that I'm applying is duplicating the layer and filling it with a white color. Then I move it downwards and we have more or less uh, the drawing we need. What I would suggest doing maybe is increasing the boundaries here on the sides. So let's go to the canvas size and let's say increase the width by 10, 110% and height by 120%. We need to fill the background with a white color again. And yeah, I guess we have a drawing ready to be placed in Blender. Just remember to save the file. The process on macOS, it's even easier. We just open the PDF file and go to the file and export settings here. We choose JPEG as a format and you can see we have similar settings to the ones in Photoshop, but we just leave the defaults and click save. So a newly created file is now visible here. And when we open it, you can see we have the same exact drawing ready to be dropped into Blender. As you could see, converting the technical documentation files is not that hard, but I think it required just a little bit of knowledge. So I hope this video was helpful to you. And we will now move into importing the drawings we had created into Blender and then creating a 3D model based on all of that. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to access all of the project files I've created while working on this course, plus the interior scenes, plus hundreds, actually thousands of Blender exclusive 3D models, you can do that by checking out the Chocofer subscription plans. This is the best way for you to support what I do on the channel and the best money can get you if you really want to be better at Blender. True. Okay, guys, thanks again for watching and I see you soon in the next video. Bye.